Sorry, this is a, a little conversation that we're going to have as far as about boosts and some of the, the codes that you have to worry about. So how you really want to look at them as far as acoustics, ventilation, and that. And who we have is Kevin Sealander, who's the regional sales manager for ThinkSpace. Um, the beauty about ThinkSpace is, is it's not like they have 9 million different products and I'm bringing in somebody who doesn't deal with this in a day-to-day -day business. Um, up until a little while ago, ThinkSpace had boosts and that was it. So he knows it. He knows how to do it. Just a couple quick things there is if you're not on mute, if you would mute, but please, unless you don't have anything going on in the background, but please, if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to put it in the chat section or you're more than welcome to just chime in. It's very open. And so with that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself in space? Well, thanks, Tim. Um, thank you all for hopping on. I really appreciate this time to talk to you about all the stuff I've been nerding out about for the last couple of years. So my name is Kevin Sealander. I work for ThinkSpace. Um, I am the regional sales manager for the Midwest and the West Coast. So I get all of the fun territories from here to Ohio, where you'll find here this to Ohio, It's a long stay. That's here, a long in, here in <laughs> Ohio, uh, to Chicago, to um, all the way down to California, so, or west to California. So, um, I'm kept busy, but it's it's really cool to be here in Columbus today to talk to you about acoustic pods. So, Kevin, thank you so much for that. Most likely, we've all been to places where they could benefit from acoustic solutions, like restaurants that are extremely noisy, bars. But can you explain to us a little bit why acoustics are so important in the workplace? I can, Amber, but this ain't working. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Technology got one. Here, click on it, and then I should be able to control it. There we go. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, real quick, I would love to talk to you about acoustics, um, and then obviously we'll get into some of the more fun parts of acoustic pods. But yeah, acoustics is a huge, huge conversation. And, you know, it's funny, for as long as I've you know, been in this industry, you know, acoustics is everywhere. It is a buzzword that everybody hears, everyone talks about. Um, don't however, I don't oh, go to bar to get it. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of, I didn't think speaking of, of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I, I think that it, it's really something that we talk about. It's a simple question, but it's really important that we get answers to. Um, and I have some statistics to, to discuss this a little, little further. So, first of all, 70 to 99 percent of office employees say that they feel distracted in the workplace. And now, when you then add a number to that, which is 56, is the number on average of distractions that people run into in the workplace. So as you can see, they rightfully so, so feel very, very distracted. Um, and now the bigger concern about all this and the more troublesome part of this is that the average time that it takes to regain the focus after that distraction is 26 minutes. So I want you all to think about your day-to-day. -day. Um, and one example for me is just a couple weeks ago, actually, I was I was with my family and I decided to pull out my laptop, do some work. And my brother walks in, asks me, hey, what was that restaurant we went to four months ago? We then got on a tangent about that restaurant and then talked about other restaurants in that area. And then finally, I asked what we were having for dinner and what he was cooking for us. And that all happened before I got back to doing the work that I was working on before. So, how's it going? Welcome. Okay, there you um, And so, the last bit that I want to add on is that experts are claiming that it takes about two hours, um, or it, it's two hours is the amount of time per day that people are really taking the time to refocus. So, that's a lot, a lot of time. That is some really crazy stuff. Man, nearly one fourth of our day is what you're telling us. We just we're distracted and we're not being productive. But can you explain some of the benefits of how, you know, having acoustics in the space is going to benefit our well-being? Yeah, absolutely. And 
You know, the first point that I want to make on this really reflects back on that previous slide is acoustics encourage focus by reducing distraction. So there's a 2021 study and that study found that 12, it takes 12 minutes and 40 seconds before someone gets interrupted. Now, to put that a step further, what we found is that it only takes 2.8 seconds for someone to completely impair their productivity by the time that they, or in order for them to fully be distracted. So essentially they then went further to look at the study and examine what is the difference between the open floor plan and the closed floor plan or more private offices. And they found that on average, there are more distractions. The number they came up with was 63 um, compared to a private office, which is 49. So there's two takeaways from this. The first one is that, you know, we've come to a time where really we're trying to bring those panel systems down, private offices down, and really open up the floor plan. However, we're finding that now there's more distractions. So by adding acoustical products and acoustic pods, like we'll, we'll talk about in a, in a little bit, what we're trying to do is increase that amount of time that people spend before getting interrupted. So even if you change it from 12 minutes and 40 seconds to 15 minutes, that's a whole three minutes that you're saving each day. So I know there are a lot of um, acoustic products on the market, Kevin. Can you explain to us some of the different products available and uh, when, when and why we should use them? So I will. I'm going to talk about one more benefit for acoustics. And that's um, well-being. And so um, the next slide is actually going to really nail a lot of this stuff in. But I wanted to talk about the well-being piece because I think this is the most important piece of acoustics. However, it is often um, overthought. But in today's day and age, everything is about well-being and ergonomics. And so really talking about this well-being piece. And so there's a 2021 study, and this was done in Europe. And they found that 83% of workers say that noise level does affect them and is important to them in the workplace. Now, what's really interesting to me about that is that they did the same study in 2016, and that number was 77%. So two things happened during that time. The first thing was we had a pandemic where everybody went home and was working for, from home. And then the second thing is we are really, you know, we are becoming much more open office heavy and less private offices. So what we're seeing is that people are now, after being at home for two and a half years, they're now more in tune with what was going on or with the acoustics in the first place. And then to further nail that in, the UK actually developed a set of requirements or guidelines called the Control of Noise Regulation of 2005. And what this does is it tells employees, employers, and honestly, the general public, what they need to do in order to regulate the temperature, or not the temperature, regulate the noise in their office space. So just so you have an idea of noise pollution and sound levels that become dangerous to your well-being, they found that anything above 65 decibels is dangerous, which is essentially a conversation in a coffee shop. So just any conversation can cause detriment and be dangerous and add to that noise pollution. But to, to your question previously, Amber, there are a, a ton, it's really crazy. And it's, it's just a little bit, but we'll talk about these new acoustical products you can add that really add to your acoustics of your place. So, the first point that I want to really just touch on is how important it is to just cover hard surfaces. So things like concrete, metal, all of those reflect sound and bounce it back. And I think everybody is aware of how obnoxious it can be when you're constantly hearing echoes and worse off when you're hearing your own voice coming back at you. So what we do alternatively is adding absorbent surfaces to those. So that can be anything from a carpet to add to the floor um, to adding PET wall coverings or fabric coverings, such as what you can see here, which is 
Um, on the screen is our jungle wall, and that's um, a product that we just came out with. And so the cool thing about that is it's a simple felt hanging piece, and that just absorbs sound um, and keeps it from re reflecting off the wall. Other options um, would be to add, you know, furniture that has acoustical properties, and you'll see some on the next page. Um, but we have a table and that bass acts as a drum that absorbs sound. Um, the third point that I want to, the third thing I want to point out are visual acoustics. So this is often forgotten when we talk about acoustics in the workplace. Vis visual privacy is just as important as acoustical privacy and visual acoustics really add that sense of space division within a workplace. So something like, um, you know, a plant wall that you could put up that might offer that space division or a marker board, simple things offer that space division. And we used to have panel systems that really offered that space division, but now we're at a point where those are coming down. So you need to come up with alternatives. And the final piece, is acoustic pods. I really love that picture of your jungle wall on top. I want to hit award this neocon, mm -hmm. um, but I'm having trouble kind of visualizing some of the other kinds of products that you guys might have that can do all these things. You know, Amber, that leads to my next slide, which is where I have a bunch of products that, that um, we have that really offer different types of acoustical properties. So. The build-up pods you can see in the top left screen, and then you can see the build-up pavilion as well in the middle right. And so these are products that offer that space division, and they are a different way to offer that sound absorption. So they're built very similar to a panel system, and they, they're perforated on the inside where they take in that noise and prevent it from echoing across the room. They're also a great way to add collaborative spaces, some soft seating to your room, so it's multifunctional furniture. In the top right, you can see our woofer table. That woofer table does what I was talking about on the, on the previous slide, where it offers a drum that absorbs sound. So not only is it a great table for you to sit, it's sturdy, but it also absorbs sound. And then the bottom left, you're going to have, again, that spatial division and collaborative space. In the middle, you have a private space for someone to have a personal phone call and feel like they really have their own little space that they can talk. And then on the bottom right is our green frame. So, you know, biophilia is a conversation that we hear day in and day out, and people want to figure out how to add that. This is a great way to add that visual privacy, that space division, um, and that biophilia. Wow. Think Space certainly does have a lot of products out there to cover these different um, facets of acoustic solutions. Yep. But before we get too far off the beaten path, path, can you tell us a little more about acoustic pods since we've all kind of come to yeah. that and when it's, we should use those? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as Tim had said earlier, for the last couple of years, ThinkSpace has really focused on acoustic pods. Hush has been our number one product and when we picked it up, the plan was to pick up a bunch of other products all at once, but um, or over time. But that really got put to the stand to the side as Hush just took off because of the many changes in our workplace. And so, you know, when we talk about why acoustics, there are a couple things that you know really we need to key in on. And first is the noise reduction. So it's that idea of creating a quiet space. So everybody, as long as I have been in the industry, everybody wants a private office. However, that's not always feasible. So these are ways that you can add these small, quiet rooms where people can have personal phone calls. They're built with soundproofing in mind. And we went a step further to test all of our sound to ISO 23351, which I know is a mouthful, but that is the official measurement for acoustical pods. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Great. Um, the next piece I want to touch on, and what I think is most relevant to what we're seeing today as people come back to the office, is the privacy piece. And keep in mind that people are going from a place where they were working from home, they could have a personal phone call, call their mom, call 
you know, family members, call their doctor, to now an open office plan where they have no place to have a conversation. So it's very important that we add these privacy spaces. And we have found, as you saw in the previous slides, privacy and acoustics increase your, your productivity by eliminating your distractions. Well, I think the other big thing about putting these things into places is you get people that come in and sit there and walk around on their phones and sit there and have them on speaker, you know, or talk really loud, you know, <laughs> as they're in it instead of then dis and they distract the Distracting whole everybody else. You sit there and put them in a room like Pete's office that that girl's sitting in, you know, mm -hmm. um, it makes it a little more friendly as far as that. Absolutely. I also think that it does a great job with the, the nice glass, you know, window and the door of making you feel like you're encapsulated, but you're not isolated from everyone. Absolutely. And it lets natural light in, which is nice. Yeah, really about that acoustical privacy, some visual privacy. I do have a question for you. So I know uh, Think Space or Hush, they used to have like a little, you know, a decal? a decal on it and some people try to put privacy film mm -hmm. on theirs is there anything that we should think about when we're doing something like that i noticed you didn't yeah. take the decal away so absolutely that's a great question and we're going to touch more on that a little later when we get to fire code because um fire codes have been um very they have varied based on jurisdiction however um, what we have found from a national standard you need to remove those. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So the second piece of this that I think is a key component to this is the mobility story behind these products. Everybody knows organizations change and so they need to be set up to change. So one of the key components that a lot of these acoustical products offer is the mobility piece. Now, I've heard the story that, you know, there was, a, there was a, a customer that we worked with and they put a bunch of these products in front of their salespeople. Their salespeople were loud. They were on the phone all the time. They needed conversations. However, they found that their HR team would walk across the room to use these products. So the great thing about these being on casters is that you can push them across the room. Now, that being said, this picture is a little misleading and a little out of dated. This product, this four person product, the hush meat now has casters, but I think the visual really tells the story of mobility in the workplace. I love this because if you think about building a room, you can't move it. Um, but also, I have one to note the, the acoustic materials in this room. In a built room, you wouldn't have that. Yeah. One, well, that's exactly the thing. When these are built, they really are built for that acoustics. Um, to be kept inside. And when we talk about the ISO rating, we're going to talk about why that's important as opposed to some of the other ratings. So there's two more points I want to point out in terms of the benefits of acoustic pods. Flexibility is another one. Everybody has had one of those projects where, you know, a customer orders a whole bunch of product and realizes that might not be what they're looking for. And flexibility for this product means it's perfect for day two. It's not disruptive. It can be put in overnight. So rather than building physical permanent walls, this would be completely non-disruptive to your office. It would only require a matter of minutes. In fact, Tim and Pete have actually put one of these booths together in a matter of hours. So how long <laughs> does it typically take to put together a product? Yeah. Yeah. So it depends on the size of the product, but these can take anywhere from two hours to, for the larger one, it could take eight hours, but that is a ton of save time as compared to actually building a, a physical structure or physical walls. The last point are the cost savings. And so the first point to make to an owner, these depreciate a lot quicker than construction. These depreciate like furniture. So this is going to have a seven-year depreciation as opposed to furniture, which is going to have that 30-year depreciation. The second bit on that. Construction. Is, yeah, construction. The other bit on that is that this can move with your company. It's a physical asset that, 
you know, with the changes in the economy, you don't know if you're going to be in the same place, you know, in a year or so or after your lease. And so the great thing about this product is you can pick it up and move it. Well, as a permanent wall, it's stuck there. That's that's a lost cost at that point. So let's say we've decided that acoustic pods are the right solution for our project. Um, and we're looking to use them. Are there any codes and requirements, different considerations that we should be yeah. thinking about? Amber, it's a great question because it is probably the biggest thing that makes people hesitant to look at these products because everyone's had had or heard a horror story. But I want you to know it's not it's not scary. There's a lot of there's a lot of codes, a lot of requirements, but you know, we made sure to really study up on it and make sure that we were checking all the boxes. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to code, these are some of the bigger ones that we run into. So the NFPA requirements, National Fire Protect Protection Agency. And so that also you might hear fire code or fire life safety. Another code, ISO 23351. We've talked about that. That's the acoustic rating. And we'll go a little bit more in depth on that. ADA compliance, UL listed full assembly, seismic anchoring, and then also the international business codes. Um, these have been taken into heavy consideration when manufacturing these products. That's quite the list. Um, I know the NFPA requirement has been quite a hot topic recently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we delve a little deeper. Into it, it has been one of the hottest topics. And so what makes it so hot is that everyone's curious about it Fire marshals are very hard about it, and as they should be, it's a very important that we get this right. But the long and short is there are no specific requirements, and they're often based on the jurisdiction. However, the NFPA has given, given us some, some general guidelines. Um, so the first couple that I'll talk about is the sides, if the sides exceed four feet, which is anything larger than your average phone booth, that would require some type of fire suppression, whether it's a sprinkler or the, su the suppression kit that you can see on the screen. Now, the great thing about Hush products is they are all built with a cutout in them, so you can easily route a, route a sprinkler or a suppression kit into it. Now, the second rule that we often run into is the clearance. So the clearance needs to be about 18 inches, or at least 18 inches between the top of the pod or the suppression kit and the ceiling. And so the third one is goes back to what you were talking about, Amber, is two sides of the glass have to have, two sides of the booth have to have glass and have no decal or frosting. So it's very important in some jurisdictions that you don't have that because what that can do is that could impair someone's um, sight from seeing an alarm if it were to go off or a strobe. Now, when in doubt, ask your building inspector. They tend to know what's going on. And I always say, get the written code from them um, to really know what's going on in your jurisdiction. Just to let you guys know, in the state of Ohio, I don't know about Pennsylvania like Mary Beth, <clears throat> so I can't speak to that. But in Ohio, if you have a anything with a door, no matter the size, it has to have either a sprinkler or a fire suppression kit. We just had a, a big install here in Columbus where, you know, got a call from the dealer yelling as far as that, oh my God, they're asking us to take all these back because of this requirement. I go, you gotta be crazy. So I actually talked to the fire marshal and explained to him and sat there and said, hey, national code is, you know, that you don't need it in this size of a thing. And he goes, I understand national code is that. But right now, the state code requires you to have that. So the nice thing about, as Kevin said, that these all of the hush ones are hooked up so you can retrofit either the, the suppression kit or the um, sprinkler system into it. And I've had, you know, we have a booth here in, in the office and we've had fire code, you know, come through and look and they haven't said anything. So it all depends on who the fire marshal is coming through or the inspector, whether you really do need to worry about that or not. Now, an important, an important point on that, and we've talked about the mobility is so important with these products. 
keep in mind, the moment you put a sprinkler into these products, they're no longer mobile. So it's important to just understand that. So yeah, the other thing you have to think about too is they have to be able to see the the alarm or the, the strobe the, the strobe light yeah. going off. So when you do have one that's three sided with one glass, you really only have certain places that you can put it. Or if you do have glass on both sides, there's more places where you can actually put this. Mm -hmm. Kevin, don't we make the self-contained units so that would be still mobile? Yeah. So this is a fire suppression kit that you see on top of the booth. We can provide that and that that allows for the mobility of the product. And it's approved by the NFPA. What's the size of that? Um, it's about 12 inches. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. But 12 inches high. So then on top of that, you would have that 18 inch clearance. That's what I was wondering. So I know the acoustics are big, but you got to compress this into a very short time frame. Mm -hmm. now. So okay. give the acoustic as Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and the ventilation and, thing in about two minutes. All right. So this is my favorite thing to talk about, but I will be telling you in about two minutes. When you hear acoustics, you think STC and NRC, but the official acoustics for these products is ISO 23351-1. And so ISO 23351 was established in June 2020 and is for anything that is fully enclosed. And a key point in this is that it's measured in decibels or dB. So what that means is that if you see STC or NRC, those are also measured in dB. So you need to make sure that you really clarify when you're having a conversation about this, is that STC, is that NRC, or is that the ISO rating, which is the official measurement. Now, you can see from this screen how this is done. They put a speaker on the inside and there's a microphone on the outside and they measure how much sound can escape. So on average, we say anything above a 24 decibels will really block out that noise. So higher is better in this rating. And really what you're looking at when we talk about that 60 to 65 decibels, which is a conversation. 65 if you're in an open office or a coffee shop and it's a little louder. What you do is you take that and then you subtract whatever that ISO rating is. And that's going to, that difference is going to give you how much sound is actually escaping. So, really, if you're in the 35 decibels escaping, you're pretty much in the clear because that's about the sound of a whisper. So ADA compliance, so real quick, it is important to have a, an ADA compliant option. We have found in some jurisdictions that you can have as many phone booths as you want, but you need to make sure that you have at least one phone, phone room or call room that is fully ADA. And so that means the 42 inch wide door, no, no step or no step greater than a quarter inch, um, room with a uh, full wheelchair rotation. And the most important part is the furniture must be ADA. Just because the booth is ADA, if you put a big table in there and a bunch of chairs and a wheelchair can't fit, that's no longer ADA. Um, so Tim brought up the ventilation. We have some of the, Think Space has some of the best ventilation. There's not a whole lot of requirements behind ventilation. What they say is that it can't, the ventilation has to be equal to what you have outside of the booth. And since a lot of the air flows from the inside or from the outside inside the booth, the ventilation is really, we're in the clear there. But the great thing about ThinkSpace's product, Hush, is that we can completely vent out the room, completely refresh the air in less than 60 seconds. And so some of the other questions that I think are very, very important to ask are, does the product need to be fully UL certified or just the components? What are the seismic requirements? And then just generally, what other codes are you running into? What other code requirements do you need to consider? So the, the one thing too about the ventilation I'd like to just quickly bring up is you do have to look at how the pot is ventilated mm -hmm. because if you put it and it's ventilated a certain way and you push it up against the wall or against another pot, that ventilation mm -hmm. might not be that good. You know, yeah. you may be pulling the dirty air from the other one, blah, 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 blah or not getting anything else because you have it too close to the, the wall. <clears throat> so those are things that you have to look at. And every pot is done differently. Mm -hmm. So it can be a legitimate thing to look at when planning this space. Um, so anything else? You got 
I that seconds. is that is my presentation. So I know it was heavy on the codes and stuff, but I appreciate everything that um does anybody you know, have any questions all popping on? that you want to question so that knockout panel does it go all the way through the foam and the upholstery or just for the top hard space? it goes all the way through so the knockout goes through the the melamine top and through the 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 panel itself so the inside panel the upholstery so you don't have to cut anything you just take out the grommets that are in there and then you just replace them or the grommet covers and replace it Perfect. There's a there's a lot of pods out there. The point is too is there's a lot of pods and there's a lot of people that are trying to get into this this arena and everybody thinks that oh all I got to do is build this box, put a door on it, put a light, and maybe a fan into it, and then boom, we got a great room as far as that that you can go and make phone calls. But there are things that you really do have to look at, and you do have to look at the codes of the area that are going it's going into because it can dramatically change and. You know, some people can sit there and say that, you know, maybe your client doesn't care about, you know, it being hooked up to the, the, the system or whatever, or having fire compression. But if you don't bring up the fact to, the, you know, the end user and they bought these, then they're going to come back and go, hey, look, you specified these or you sold these things to me. You should have known where if you show it, tell them at the end that, hey, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But here is a, a you know the, what you're presenting as that where it can be retrofitted and then it, it can save a lot of stuff absolutely so if nobody's got any questions nikki you want to pull the first name okay somebody just pull a name okay oh yeah here we go pictures i assume there's choices it's adjustable so you can adjust the uh, steve brown steve it's me all right <laughs> came in late last Next guy here Oh, the old last guy in trick. All right. You can pull to it. Thank you. Okay. Then we have Audra Barenhaus. All right. And Sal Perella. All right, Sal. Yeah, yeah, all right. All right. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. all. So well, uh, get in touch with all the winners to sit there and uh, give you your selection. And thank you guys. Appreciate you taking the time. And again, if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to stick around for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, so cheers. Great presentation, guys. Thank you. Oh, you just said that's out because you won. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Actually, I wasn't amusing at all, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Hey, Tim, just to clarify, which I, I came in a little bit late on the meeting. Which brands is it that you personally rep? We have ThinkSpace, which ThinkSpace, they distribute. They're the, the, the U.S. distributor for Hush. Okay, Hush. So, um, and, and is Hush, Hush is the brand? You only, you only rep one brand? Yeah. Okay, the reason I, w I wanted to clarify that is because I didn't want to shoot something else down that you were, um, that you were repping. But uh, from personal experience, I sold a client of ours uh, several hush boots, and they they're just remarkable. They work really well. Oh, well, God, you said that they were going to shoot it down, and I'm like, oh my god! Yeah, I, I know, I know. They are. <laughs> um, but they went out and bought um, another brand, and I won't mention the name of the other brand uh, just to be respectful. But um, I was at their office, oh, maybe about a month and a half ago. And I said, oh, I see you got another one. How do you like it? And they said, oh, it's okay. And I actually went, they had both of them in the same room, the Hutch Booth and this other brand. And it's a pretty well-known brand. Um, and I went into the Hush Booth and while they were talking and I could barely hear a thing. And I went into this other brand that looked really nice, but I could overhear their entire conversation. Wow. So there definitely is, um, a, you know, I know Hush is not the least expensive one out there. But I think this is one product, a uh, type of product, uh, that the uh, adage really is true that you kind of get what you pay for. Um, you know, if you if you spend say uh, half to three quarters as much money, but it just doesn't work, well, you really haven't gained much. So yeah, I just, no, I just wanted to throw that out there. That. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Sal. Absolutely. Um. So now you owe me that money that you said you'd give me if I. <laughs> all right guys i'm signing off great presentation thanks a lot tim
Yeah, great one. Thanks, everybody. Ciao.